for this effect, I would start off by explaining to the participant, I have a prediction in this box, and we will actually take a look at the prediction at the very end. So now I could actually give the deck a little shuffle before I hand it over to the participant and they follow my every instruction. So let's say I hand the deck over to the participant and I ask them to cut off, let's say, less than half the cards and put them off to the side. So let's say they cut around this many. We could put the rest of the pile away and just mess with the cards that the participant cut off. And I would ask them now to name a number out loud. Let's say between, oh, it really doesn't matter. How about 5 and 10? So don't name 5, don't name 10. So 6, 7, 8, or 9. Now because I actually don't have a participant with me, we're going to use this other half, and the first 6, 7, 8, or 9 we come to will be the number named out loud. So just by going through, in this case we have an 8, but it can really be any number. Now I would pick up the <clears throat> first half and I would say, okay, we're going to count eight cards, but we're going to count eight cards a little differently. So we're going to do it in groups of two. So we have two, four, six, eight. And if we look at this card here, in this case, we get the Ace of Diamonds. Now keep in mind, I had a prediction since the beginning. The deck was shuffled, you named a number, and we counted that number and we got the Ace of Diamonds. What if my prediction matched? The, the participant can open up the box, take out the cards, and when they spread through, they're going to see all of the cards are mixed up, different, and they're also face up. That's very important because one card here is face up is actually face down, while the rest are face up. This is the Ace of Diamonds. My prediction since the very beginning is the Ace of Diamonds. That is today's effect. If you would like to learn how to do this, make sure to stick around for the tutorial. Before we get into the tutorial here, <clears throat> in case you're wondering about the two decks I'm using, these are the red and blue Bicycle Victor back. I do have a deck review on both of these, so I will leave those that review in the description. So, for this video, I'm going to show you how I did it in the performance, and then at the end, I'm going to show you two more ways you could go about this. So, for the way in the performance, now you don't need the second deck, this is totally optional. You could even have the card written down on a piece of paper, or you could actually commit the card to memory, and before they turn over the card, you could try to read their mind, okay? They could even look at the card, not show you, and then you try to read their mind that way, and guess the Ace of Diamonds. I hope that makes sense, but there are a lot of ways you can go about this. But if you're going to do it how I did it, go through one deck and take out any card, in this case the Ace of Diamonds, and I think it's better if they both match, but of course it's up to you. You don't have to do matching. And I turn this the other way when I put it in the deck. Because if it's going to be the same orientation as the rest of the cards, it's not really much of a reveal. But if all of these are face down, and this one ace is face up, then that's a pretty good reveal there. So this goes in about halfway in the deck, and it's off to the side. This other matching card, the ace of diamonds, you're going to put seventh from the top. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. <clears throat> and now you are all set. So starting off with your prediction in the box and the card seventh from the top, I like to start off by explaining to the spectator, I have a prediction here in this box, which we will get to at the end. 
Now, you could leave this box in your pocket and not even draw attention to it until the end of the effect. It's up to you. So, I like to say I have a prediction and I leave it off to the side. Now, with the rest of these cards, if you wanted, you could do false shuffles and or cuts. If you don't know how to do any of those, I will leave in the description some false cuts and then the false shuffle I did. Now I'm going to have the spectator cut then less than I'm going to have the spectator cut less than half the deck. So, I would say around this many. You could use the whole deck, but I think it's just a little weird. And because if the spectator cuts anywhere and the deck was shuffled beforehand, it's going to look like the card came out of nowhere. So, you're going to have them cut around this many, okay? Now, if you notice, they cut a really small packet, and you're not too sure if this is seven or more cards. Have them put it back on top of the deck and cut a little more, because that's what you're going to want. You want more than seven cards, but... The number doesn't really care. I would say you need you want at least 10 or more cards just because of the number they might name. So let's say they cut <clears throat> around this many and they place them to the side. You're going to pick up this packet and you're going to make this look random, you know, a little natural like you're thinking. You're going to say, okay, how about you name a number out loud? Let's say, oh, between... 5 and 10, okay, and you want this to seem like it really doesn't matter, and it wasn't pre-planned, you just happen to think of it right there. So, once they name the number between 5 and 10, and the only choices they have are 6, 7, 8, and 9, 5 and 10 actually don't work, and you're going to do something, I think this is called the Curious Count by Fred Taylor, I could be wrong, but I believe that's the name. Okay, so let's say they name a number between 5 and 10. I will go through each of the uh, scenarios here, but it really doesn't matter. So in this case, we get 6, which I was going to start off anyway, so that's actually perfect. So if they name 6, you could actually have the spectator do 6 and 7, I wouldn't have them do 8 and 10, or 8 and 9, excuse me. It may be a little confusing, but if they name 6, you can have them pick up the packet, deal 6 cards on the table, and while they're doing this, you could actually recap the effect. The deck was shuffled, you cut off any number of cards you wanted, and you named any number you wanted as well. And you're going to have them turn over the card on top of the packet. So they dealt six cards here, meaning the seventh card they turn face up is the Ace of Diamonds. And now you can reveal it in your other deck any way you would like. But let's go with the rest of the scenarios here, and then we will come back. So that's what you're going to do with six. <clears throat> Now, 7 is actually perfect because it's spot on. So you can say, okay, deal 6 cards, turn face up that 7th card. And really, no one should notice with the 6 that you deal 6 cards but turn up the 7th card. So make sure your wording here is very... Make sure you're careful with your wording. Don't say something that might imply something else, okay? So we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, the Ace of Diamonds. Now let's say, for example, like the performance, <clears throat> they named uh, 8. What you're going to do is you're going to count by 2s, the skip count, 2, 4, 6, 8. But you're going to drop the cards in groups of 2. One thing you want to watch for is you don't want to reverse count, okay? So you just want to push off two and drop them. Okay, just don't reverse count like this. So we'll go two, four, six, eight. And that top card will be the ace. Now, if they go with three, it's going to be just like before. But instead, you're going to go by threes. So you're going to skip count by three, three, six, nine. And you're going to drop in groups of three. So we have three, 
six, nine. They turn over this card, and it is the Ace of Diamonds. Now, let's go back to the effects. So you know how every scenario works. I ask them to name a number. Let's say they name six. I say, okay, I want you to take the packet now, and I want you to deal six cards and turn that seventh card face up. And keep in mind, the deck was shuffled. You cut off any amount of cards you wanted. You named any number, and now you dealt to that number, and you turn the card face up. In this case, the Ace of Diamonds. I had a prediction here since the beginning. What if it matched your Ace of Diamonds? Now, they might not know what a match is, and that's the pattern you could use. So feel free to use what I just said, or come up with your own pattern. So if they don't know what a match exactly is, you can say, what if the Ace of Diamonds is predicted in this box? Or if you want to keep the match a mystery, you could say, just open up the box for me. I think you'll find out yourself what a match is. They open up the box, and it really doesn't matter how they spread through. Personally, I would have them spread through face down just because of that face up ace. But some people may not want to do that. And it's good to preserve the mystery too. But you can judge your participant for how they do it. But they can go through. <clears throat> and when they get to the face down card, I think most of them have the instinct to just turn it over. If you can guide them, have them don't look at it. Up jog it though, but keep going through and say, I want you to see if there's any ace of diamonds in here. I could have messed up. They go through. There's an ace of hearts, which is pretty close. No ace of diamonds, except that this one card is the ace of diamonds. And that is the effect. So that is how you can go about the effect that I did in the performance. Now I'm going to teach you two more ways you can do this. I'm going to teach you a way that your spectator or participant can do the effect along with you, so you both get the force card, and I'm going to show you a way you can do this from an impromptu deck, shuffled, and I will throw in a bonus of a spectator choosing a card. So let's go ahead and get right into this here. <clears throat> so if you're going to have, let's say, the spectator doing this with you, you're going to take your forest card, the Ace of Diamonds, put it 7th from the top. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Now you're set in that deck. Take the other deck and do the same thing. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. You can put these in the box and you are all set. <clears throat> So you can go up to your spectator, and this is perfect now because there's a free choice of what deck for them to choose. But you say, okay, I want you to take the deck, but I want you to do everything I do. So just mirror everything. So it doesn't matter. Let's say they take red, I take blue. Now if you happen to know any easy false cuts here that retain the top stock of the deck, but you can shuffle the rest of it, and your spectator can do it with you. Go ahead and do that, okay? W really quick, one easy cut you might want to do, I think I taught this before. This is called the OC cut by J.O.C. They cut off about a quarter, they throw those down, they shuffle the rest of the deck, they cut off another chunk of cards, they shuffle the rest, they throw these down, and then you just stamp these back up how you threw them down. That looks like it shuffles the deck, but it actually maintains your top stock. So if your spectator wants to do that, they can. <clears throat> so now you're going to have them cut off a chunk of cards. And I say, okay, I want you to try to cut off, how about this many cards? Now personally, it doesn't matter if they go a few more. You just want to be careful that they don't go less than that, because they might actually run into your, st your stack here. Okay, so 
you can say, I want you to try to copy me. It doesn't have to be perfect, though. And that might be a little better. So let's say they cut off this many, and you cut off this many. It doesn't matter. You can put these away, and now you can have them really name any number they would like out loud between 5 and 10 by doing this little thing I said. <clears throat> so how about you name a number? It doesn't matter. Oh, let's say 5 and 10. One thing I probably wouldn't do is what I just did. Go ahead and do this. Because I might not, I might flash the ace, and that might be bad, because they might be able to put together at the end how you did it. You never know, because they might be able to count seven cards really quick, and then figure out that way. So let's just say, for example, six, seven, eight, or nine. Let's say the spectator names nine. I'm not going to go through all of the outcomes again. You can watch the video again. But you're going to have them count in groups of three, skip count by three, three, six, nine. Turn this card face up, in this case the ace of diamonds. I think it's better if you do it first, then you say, okay, how about you try to do that, just like I did. Three, six, nine. What if you had the ace of diamonds on top as well? They turn it over and they have the Ace of Diamonds. So another way you can go about this is actually going to be from a shuffled deck. So let's say you have either another deck of cards on you or even some paper and a pen. You can have the deck shuffled here and then when you take it back, you can show these are all different. Come to any card you can remember easily. Let's say the Queen of Hearts, and you're going to call her to the seventh position from the top of the deck. So when I get the top of the deck, I spread out a bunch of cards, and I show these are all different while I'm counting three, six. I put my thumb on that six card, the Four of Hearts. I pull it back, meaning I can square up the six card chunk in my hand. I can slide that queen right in, put the six cards underneath, and now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And one more way you could do this is with a spectator selected card. So you can have them take out any card they would like. Let's say the six of clubs, and you're going to control it seven from the top. Personally, I would do a false overhand shuffle, but you can do it any way you would like. And I will leave links for the false shuffle, of course, but also some card controls, even the Marlow tilt and the bluff pass. And I think that will be the video from me for today. So I hope you really enjoyed this one. And I hope you enjoyed the bonus effects as well. If you are new here, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you next time with a new video. Bye.